Hello, maths fans! That's right, I'm not Tom. I'm Matt Parker. That Tom previously helped me make a video about Pokemon that I've just put out on my second channel. And Tom made an amazing video about the ridiculous mathematics of the Pokédex to go with it. So that's the video you're watching now. Afterwards, you can check out my video if you want, but I'm going to hand you straight over to Tom. Thank you, Matt. The only place to start here is with the Titan that is Waylord. Waylord is a giant whale Pokemon introduced in Ruby and Sapphire, which at the time was the biggest Pokemon ever with a height of 14 and a half meters and a weight of 398 kilograms. These are pretty big numbers, but do they make sense? Let's start by drawing a diagram of our Pokemon. So Waylord is some kind of really big whale. So I'm gonna draw it kind of like a big fish. You hopefully get the idea. <laughs> Maybe it's got a little smile going on over here. And looking at the image from the game, we can see that it has a sort of underbelly as such of the Pokemon here, and this bit is coloured in white. Now, if we take the 14 and a half metres, as given in the Pokedex, to refer to the length of our Pokemon, then looking at an image of Waylord from the game, we can see it is around five times longer than the amount of its body above the water. Now, since the blue part, which is the bit above the water, is approximately half of its body, that's going to give us a length to height ratio of five to two. So we have this ratio of five to two, which is going to be the length to the height ratio. Now, given we know the length to be 14.5 meters, this gives us a height of approximately 5.8 meters. So as expected, Waylord is pretty big. Taking a leaf out of the physicist's notebook, we can approximate Waylord as a big old cylinder. Again, this is an approximation, but as any physicist watching can attest, this is a pretty standard approximation. So we have a cylindrical object. We know its length or its height in the case of the cylinder as 14.5 meters. And we also know its diameter is 5.8. So that gives us a radius for our cylinder of 2.9 meters. So this means we can calculate the volume. So the volume of a cylinder, and in this case, the volume or the approximate volume of our Pokemon Waylord is going to be equal to pi times the radius squared times, in our instance here, the length. So this is going to be pi times 2.9 squared multiplied by 14.5. And when you plug those numbers in, you'll get a volume of 383 meters cubed. Now remember, the weight of Waylord is given as 398 kilograms. So the weight is 398. So what this means is we can calculate the density of our Pokemon. We simply divide the weight by its volume. So the density of Waylord, density of Waylord is equal to 398 divided by 383, which gives us 1.04 kilograms per meter cubed. Now the density of air, this stuff all around us, is actually equal to a larger number. So the density of air is given by 1.225 kilograms per meter cubed. So what this ultimately means, and I'm sure some of you have already figured this out, is that not only would our giant whale Pokemon definitely float and therefore be pretty useless as a whale, it would not only just float in water, it is lighter than air. And so would actually float up 
into the atmosphere like a giant blue blimp. Unfortunately, Waylord isn't the only Pokemon with a ridiculous value for its density. At the other extreme, we have Cosmoem. This is a star-shaped Pokemon, which first appeared in the game's Sun and Moon. It looks much nicer than my picture, but this is the best I can do. Its Pokedex entry lists its height as 10 centimeters, and its weight a quite frankly ridiculous 999.9 kilograms. Possible formatting issues going on there. One for you there, Matt. Given the size and shape of the Pokemon, we can estimate its volume to be approximately 10 to the minus four meters cubed. Now, again, dividing the weight by the volume, gives us a density which is equal to 10 to the seven kilograms per meter cubed. Now to me, this looks like a very big number. For comparison, osmium, the densest material on earth, has a density of only 22,610 kilograms per meter cubed. That's over 400 times less than our Pokemon. The core of the sun has a density of around 1.5 times 10 to the 5 kilograms per meter cubed. Again, a lot less than our Pokemon. Heck, even the Sagittarius A star black hole has a density 10 times less than Cosmoem. So yes, this is a very big number. And to be honest, I'm not really sure what's worse. A whale Pokemon which is lighter than air that ascends into the sky like a giant blimp, or a small star-shaped Pokemon that could fit in your hand that's more dense than a black hole. Either way, it's pretty clear that over at Game Freak, the laws of physics aren't always taken into consideration when it comes to designing new Pokemon. Moving away from density, there are plenty of other oddities in the Pokedex that clearly indicate an inability to do some basic maths. Take Magcargo, a fire snail with a rock for a shell. The Pokedex entry says that Magcargo has a body temperature of 18,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Now this is clearly a very big number, and when you look at the temperature of the surface of our sun, which is only a measly 9,940 degrees Fahrenheit, this is clearly ridiculous. But that, unfortunately, is only half of the story. Since my cargo is so hot, it will of course radiate a large amount of energy. The Stefan Boltzmann law states that the amount of thermal energy radiated by an object per second per meter of surface area is a constant times the temperature to the power of four. So what that means for my cargo is the following. The thermal output per second per meter of surf meter squared of surface area is equal to a constant which is 5.67 times 10 to the minus eight, multiplied by the temperature in Kelvin to the power four. So here, that's going to be 10,255 Kelvin, all to the power of four. Now this is going to give us a very large number. In fact, this is equal to 627 million joules, per second and per meter squared of surface area. The Pokedex lists my cargo as having a height of 78.7 centimeters. If we now borrow from biology and model our animal as a sphere, we're going to assume it has a diameter equal to 78.7 centimeters or 
0.787 meters, then we can use our formula for the surface area of a sphere. So the surface area is four pi times the radius squared. The radius, of course, is half of the diameter. So plugging in all of those numbers, we get a surface area of 1.95 meters squared. If we now multiply this by our thermal output per second per meter squared of surface area, this gives us our final power output from a single mag cargo, which is going to be equal to 1200 megawatts. For comparison, the UK's largest power station, Drax, has an output of 3900 megawatts, which is enough to provide 6% of the UK's power consumption. This means three mag cargo will provide enough power to equal this power station, or with just over 50 of these rock snail Pokemon, we could, in theory, power the entire country. But what comes out must first go in. And in mag cargo's case, this means taking in a, quite frankly, extortionate amount of energy to then dispel it at this rate of 12,000 megawatts. In fact, we can convert this to Mars bars. Now, a typical Mars bar contains 230 calories. If we convert this to our units, this is 0.963 megajoules. So what this means for my cargo is that to have a power output equivalent to 1200 megawatts, our rock snail Pokemon must in fact consume 1276 Mars bars every second. That is difficult enough in a lifetime, never mind in a single second. So in summary, our Pokemon having a temperature of 18,000 degrees Fahrenheit is very ridiculous indeed. There are even more dubious entries in the Pokedex that would seem to indicate an inability to do maths over at Game Freak HQ. The cuddly bear Pokemon, Beware, is said to be strong enough that it often accidentally crushes the spine of its trainer when giving them a hug. Crushing a human spine requires a force greater than 3,000 newtons, which is equivalent to a 500 pound car hitting a brick wall at 30 miles per hour. That is one strong bear. Or what about the rock rhinoceros that is Rhyhorn? Its tackle is said to be powerful enough to bring down a skyscraper. For a 50 story building, that's over 1,000 pounds of explosive worth of power. And sticking with buildings, the Firefox Pokemon Blaziken may only be six feet tall, but according to the Pokedex, can leap over a 30 story building. That's like me being able to make a 100 meter vertical jump. Perhaps on another planet in another solar system, but certainly not on Earth. I could go on and on, but I think by now you get the point. Pokemon is an excellent game, and my many tattoos and excellent choice of t-shirt can attest to just how much I love this game. But, Game Freak, next time can you please do the maths when deciding on future Pokedex entries? It might be a fictional world, but it would be nice to think that most of the laws of physics would still hold true. Thank you everyone for watching, and a huge thank you to Matt Parker from Stand Up Maths for his cameo do head over to his channel and check out his awesome video on the Pokemon Calculator. And remember, if you've enjoyed this video, please do subscribe, and I'll see you all next time. Take care.